Okay, today I'm going to talk about the de Moivre cervical distribution. So there are different ways that the future lifetime of X, or T of X, can be distributed. There are different values that it can take on, and each of those values has a corresponding probability, in other words. Um, arguably, then the easiest way to model this future lifetime is to say that for any value that the future lifetime can take on, they all have the same probability. So this is a uniform distribution, and it's going to look like this. When we're talking about future lifetime, there's going to be a limiting age, and that's denoted by omega. This is just a uniform distribution. They call it the de Moivre distribution in life contingencies. So don't be intimidated by the name. We might want to know some different things about X now that we know how his future lifetime is distributed. We might want to know, for example, if we're really pessimistic, the, probab the probability that he fails to live T years. We know that that's denoted by TQX. Okay, so starting off, let's say you're starting at zero. Forget about the TQX. Let's say you're starting at zero, and you want to know the probability that you that your future lifetime is somewhere in here. It's pretty easy to see that it's going to be the ratio of these intervals, right? It's easier maybe to see if you put values to it. So let's say that this is 10, and you're limiting age is 100. You want to know the probability that your future lifetime is somewhere between 0 and 10. It's easy to see that that's going to be 10 over 100, or 0.1. Okay. What you're really doing is you have the length of this interval over the length of the interval in which you started. So now, let's say back to TQX, you want to know the probability that your X world fails to live T years. So T more years from X, that puts us at X plus T. Okay. So we have, again, the, just, just the ratio of those intervals the ratio of the lengths of those intervals. So the probability that you fail to live the next two years means that your future lifetime is somewhere in here, because you're definitely already here, and you don't get past here. Okay, so the length of this interval is just t over the length of the interval in which you started, which is w minus x. Maybe this didn't need to be quite so huge. Okay, then maybe we want to know the probability that you do survive t years. This is tpx, of course. Of course, we know that that's 1 minus tqx. So you could just take 1 minus this. You should also be able to reason it out if you prefer to do it that way. By looking at your graph. If you do survive two years, that means that your future lifetime is somewhere in here. Okay? So it's the ratio of the length of the interval that you end up in if you survive over the length of the interval in which you started. So we have the length of this interval is omega, I think I said W before, omega minus quantity x plus t which is omega minus x minus t, all over the interval in which he started, which is omega minus x. Um, interesting thing to note, if you haven't already, is that tqx, the probability of failing to live an additional t years, is really just the same thing as the cumulative distribution function for x evaluated at t. And that makes sense if you think about it. If you think about what the cumulative distribution function is, it's saying, okay, we're summing up um, all the probabilities of values that t can take on. We're summing up the probabilities of values that the future lifetime can take on all the way up to t. 
Okay, so the probability that your future lifetime is 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or anything in between, all the way up to t. And your future lifetime is when you die, right? So that's the same thing as tqx. The probability that you die somewhere in here is the probability that your future lifetime is somewhere in here. Okay, so those are the same. And then similar reasoning will show you that the probability of surviving an additional t years is the survival function for x evaluated at t. And of course we know that you know tpx is 1 minus tqx. In the same way, the survival function of x evaluated at t is 1 minus the cumulative distribution function for x evaluated at t. Okay, these are complements and these are complements. So that makes sense. You know, not just for de Moivre, but in general. Um, one thing that might be good to try is, you know, you should be able to reason out in the same way the probability that an x world lives t years and then fails to live u years. I would try to reason that out, maybe, and then, you know, you know already that this is the probability that you live t years, but not t plus u years, right? So you can figure out this and this and see if they match, if you got it right. Um, Another thing we might want to know about is the force of mortality. So the force of mortality we know is the rate of failure. I right? think about it as the rate of failure. So say for example that say for example that this is time 10. And I have a big group of people and this is their future lifetime. Bigger the people, I don't know how many. How many do you expect to die or fail in each year? Okay, whatever, that's 10. Okay, you expect a tenth of them to die in the first year, then another tenth, then another tenth, then another tenth. Because the probability always stays the same. So the force of mortality. is just 1 over the length of the interval, right? 1 tenth and then 1 tenth, 1 tenth. If you had, you know, 100 years, it'd be 1 one hundredth, 1 one hundredth, 1 one hundredth, die off in each year. We want to know the force of mortality for an x rolled after t years. That means we've gotten to this point. So we're looking at this interval, and it's going to be 1 over the length of the interval, which is omega minus x plus t, omega minus quantity x plus t, or omega minus x minus t. The last thing. The last thing that you should remember is about the expected value and the variance for a uniform distribution. Of course, it's, it's pretty easy to see if you just look at the graph. And the expected value, like if you're at x, how long do you expect to live? Okay, well, you expect to live about half that. On average, people will live half of that. So it's the length of the interval over 2. And then for the variance of the uniform distribution, you know it's the length of the interval squared over 12. And that just about does it, I think, for the de Moivre distribution. I hope, I know it pretty seems pretty simple when you see it, but it, I think it's important to stop and look at it visually. Hopefully you won't have to memorize those formulas, and hopefully you'll be able to recognize them when you see them in problems. So take care and happy studying.